Welcome back. You're watching Editor's Roundtable on CNBC TV 18. It's been an action-packed week for our markets as we navigated the global turmoil, the Fed decision, and finally, to cap it off, the amendments to the finance bill. So we discussed all this, and through all this, uh, Nigel, one thing that remains constant is the love for travel. Yeah. And the minute you get a holiday, everyone is ready to leave the shores of Mumbai. You just came back, and you've done some study on how the hotel industry is looking now. Well, you know, it all started when I was looking at going for a vacation. I started checking out hotels and the rates were absolutely skyrocket and even occupancies were very, very high. So I said, let's dig a little bit more. First of all, I'm worried because next month the credit card bill comes. So I'm a little worried on that front. But otherwise, it seems for the hotel industry, you know, we talk about discretionary spends getting pulled back. But at least as of now, the number of check-ins are outweighing the checkouts, particularly for this space. And I'll say that I'll, I'll just break it up into three big buckets. One is, what are the triggers that are supporting? One is the ongoing G20 event. So the occupancies are high out there. The other couple of factors that we're looking at is we have big sporting events. You have a World Cup later this year, cricketing World Cup, and we know the country is gripped with cricket. You have IPL as well that's out there. And corporate travel, that's picked up. But international travel is yet to pick up. You know, I understand it's only around 40-50% of what it normally is. So there are enough triggers that are pushing it higher. That's one bucket of it. The second factor that we're looking at is the, uh, the revenue per available room. And I just remove the last three months, you know, for, for the industry on the whole, October, November, December. Just take a look at the big increase that we have seen. So average revenue per room as well is good. And the analysis that's coming out from most of these hotel companies is demand is far better in comparison to supply. So demand outstrips supply. That's always good news for the industry. A qu quick few points on a few of these listed companies. Indian hotels, the best ever results is what they delivered in the past quarter. And they are firing both on the ARR as well as on the occupancies. Chalet, well, they're not really there in terms of occupancies. But yet operating leverage is playing out, telling you the revenues per room have really gone up. Then we move to EIH. Oh, there as well, you have the quarterly occupancy, which is looking very, very good. Finally, Lemon Tree, they are saying that occupancy is still not at peak. But they deliver the best ever results, revenues, EBITDA, you know, profitability. And they're also bracing for the time ahead because they're adding a good amount of hotels and a good amount of uh, rooms as well. So for the time being, it appears there's enough of triggers to support the hotel industry, at least for the next couple of years. The only problem is if things get a little bit dicey, will there be a toss up between ARR and occupancy? For now, it seems to be that the number of check-ins are way more than the number of checkouts. And before we finish up, just putting out a valuation snapshot as well for our viewers. Well, um, Nilesh, we've discussed a lot of themes. Let's talk about some fun stuff. I'm sure you love to travel as well. But what about the hospitality sector? The unlock has played out or there's still more to go? Would you look at the space? Yeah, we've been constructing on the, constructive on this space and it's clearly been one of the outliers um, of, of, uh, of whatever you could call in terms of revenge travel or the way the consumers have behaved post-COVID. So clearly, this has been a standout sector um, and it's yet showing the strongest signs. I mean, yet uh, it, it continues to kind of be very robust. Uh, like what you talked about, there's still some room for occupancy levels to improve. ARRs are very strong. Uh, so what it looks like at least is that for the next three to four quarters or, or for at least financially at 20, 2023, 24, it's probably one sector where you'd still see double digit earnings growth. Um, the big challenge for them would be beyond FI24 because I think uh, they would pretty much run out of capacity. And unless they kind of have some new capacity coming up, uh, they won't be able to kind of uh, demonstrate the, the growth momentum. So I think it looks good for now for another two to four quarters beyond that. I think they will face some kind of a plateau because they'll run out of capacity. Mm, I can I, I can attest to that. I was in Odisha uh, mm -hmm. for a short break, and in Puri we wanted a late checkout in, out of the, one of the hotels, and they said, "Sorry, sir, I mean we are packed, so yeah. you know we we got half an hour grace. That's all. I mean, but we had to pack up some more check-ins as uh, more check-ins and checkouts. Uh, check I experienced I that as well on my trip. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'd gone to Dubai, and they said that it's pack-up time, 11 o'clock. So <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, with the two kids, mom, dad, you know, rushing out. <laughs> All right, uh, Nilesh, uh, thank you very much for joining us. It's great speaking with you uh, and have a good restful weekend. We all need it and see you back soon again. From all of us here, it's goodbye. Thank you very much for watching another edition of Editor's Roundtable. Programming continues. Stay with us.